everyone, it's Jackie Williams. Thanks so much for joining me. I'm here in a hot and humid New Zealand, but I'm very excited to share with you some fun projects using the Catching Butterflies stamp set, a very cute one for projects for kids or for anyone who likes a bit of sparkle and some butterflies. And I will be showing you the paper piecing technique. So let's go to my work desk. So this is the Catching Butterflies stamp set, and this is a celebration gift. So it is free with $110 purchase, and that's in New Zealand dollars. It may be different if you're watching from another country. And these are available, or this stamp set is available through the 16th of March here in the South Pacific. I believe it's 28th of February if you are in other parts of the world. I also wanted to show you the Sunshine and Rainbow 6x6 paper. These are also a celebration gift. And I thought these were a great one to showcase alongside the Catching Butterflies and the paper piecing technique because when you do the paper piece, piecing technique, sorry, you need very small prints. And this particular paper pack features a lot of very small prints. And then the other side is equally as fun with lots of rainbows and fun bright colors. So it was actually a nice match with the um, Catching Butterflies. So that is also free with $110 New Zealand purchase. And so let's start with our project. So I have a card base and this is 11 inches by four and an eighth inch. And that is a little bit of an unusual size. I just use that size because then no matter if you have letter or size cardstock or a fork size cardstock, you can make this card and the measurements work. You don't have to like refigure out anything. And then I have a piece of white that is four by five and three eighths inches. And I have gone ahead and embossed that with the macrame folder, or if you live in the South Pacific, you would say macrame, so either one of those. And I'm just gonna put that onto my card front. I do like to have a couple layers on my cards just to give it that bit of weight. Then I've got a few pieces of the designer series paper, and these are just slightly smaller again. So three and seven eighths by five and a quarter and three and three quarters by five and an eighth. So they're an eighth of an inch smaller than this and then an eighth of an inch smaller than each other. Now, when you're picking your designer series paper, I would recommend that you pick one that's more of a busy print and one that's more of a solid print is what I call those. And the larger one would be the more busy print. Now you could put these on straight. I'm putting them on at an angle. I quite like the look of the angled pieces. And then you kind of see actually a bit more of the designer series paper. And then even for a more simple card or simple layers, it just got that little bit more interest. Now I'm gonna set that aside. I'll just put that over there just on the edge of the camera. And then I've got a piece of white that is just smaller again. It's four and three quarter inches by three and five eighths inches. And I will put these measurements below the video so you don't have to write as you're watching. And I have actually put my stamps on the Stamparatus. And I like to go three squares down and three squares over. I'm just gonna double check myself. Yep. And I'm just going to stamp down the girl with the net. And it's not been inked very well. Actually, I need to just get a little bit more on there, but that's okay. All I want here is just a general outline of the um, image. I don't need it to be stamped very well at this point because I'm just gonna add some color first. I also want to introduce you to the Natural Tones blends. Now I'm going to do a video just using these. There's been some fabulous, fabulous ideas shared in and amongst the demonstrators, Stampin' Up! demonstrators, that I just want to share with you. Now these have been marketed initially for skin tones um, and also for like animal fur and things like that, but there's so much more you can actually do with them. You'll also want to note that they don't have names like our colors. I'm just going to straighten this up. Uh, that they actually are numbered. 
and I've numbered them from 100 to 1,000, so it's 100, 200, and so on. But you'll see they're not really from light to dark. Uh, they, kind, they kind of are, but not really. Like, yeah, it's just different tones. Okay, so we want to just first decide what skin tone we want our little girl. So um, throw me out a suggestion. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, I'm seeing some, some suggestions here for like these middle colors. So I'm just going to pick one. I'm going to go for this one, which is uh, number 700. And I'm just going to color in her face careful not to get her eyes or her hair and um, you can of course mix these colors you don't have to just use this color you could um, add some lighter and darker colors over top now her hands are so tiny I recommend you just dot the pen down and just let the paper absorb just that tiny little drop of ink. Same with her feet. She's got very, very delicate little feet. Okay, then I will go into, like I said, more detail with these on another video, but that gives you just uh, one idea. And then I'm gonna choose, I think, some darker colors. Let's go for like these ones here. And I'm just going to color in her hair a little bit. And you're going to think that this looks terrible because, to be honest, it kind of does. But I promise you, when I'm finished, it will look good. So I'm just going to add some dark colors in through there. I actually think I'm going to go for a lighter color, um, like much lighter. Now, another thing I've noticed as I've worked with these, this color up here, the 1000, is actually fairly pink. And I think it actually could pass for Blushing Bride, which is great because we haven't had a stamp and blend in that color. I'm just gonna use a little bit of this here and just add some cute little cheeks onto our girl. Well, I don't know if I got those exactly in the right spot, but you get um, the idea. Now, we want to color our net. So if we look at the colors of our papers, I'm thinking that we should color our net maybe a yellow so that it's not too much blue. So let's grab our So Saffron blend. And I'm just going to lightly color this in, just going over the details, because you want to have the effect that it you know, is a net, it's not solid. And then maybe grab that lighter so saffron and just go around the edges here. Now, one of the ways that you can get the look of depth without actually cutting something out and putting it up on dimensionals is to use your gray marker and again, I know this doesn't look great at the moment, but it's going to. And just go around the outline. Now you could go around the girl as well, but I'm just gonna do the net for now because the net is sort of, you know, probably in motion if this were, were um, a scene. Now what we're gonna do is grab our ink pad. So it's all been colored in except for the dress, which we're going to paper piece. Now I know it's off camera, but I'm just going to ink up my girl again with that memento and I'm going to stamp down over top and like magic she actually looks pretty good I mean her hair looks decent and all those different colors we put on there it all looks good and actually before I move that away so I'm gonna put that back whoops I got a little black smudge keeping it real then I'm going to stamp the butterflies on there as well. One of the beauties of having a stamparatus is you've got two arms, like as in these are the arms, not me having two arms. And so, um, so you can have several stamps loaded on and without having to take the stamps on and off. Okay, so I'm just gonna quickly add some color to these butterflies and 
I'm just going to use, I think, coral. This was um, Flirty Flamingo. These butterflies, I'm not going to spend too much time on because I'm actually going to put something over the top. Now, you'll notice that this butterfly is overlapping our net, which is why we're going to put a separate butterfly over the top. Okay, but I will do that technique of coloring and then stamping again to get that really crisp look. Okay, let's go ahead and put this onto our card front. And then I wanna show you the paper piecing technique. Now this I recommend you put on straight or fairly straight. Mine's just tiny, tiny bit on, one a on an angle. And so the paper piecing technique is basically, you will stamp on a piece of printed paper. Now, ideally, it's a piece of paper that has a very small print. So you can see that if you had like a big flower that's maybe as big as the girl and you um, did her little dress, you wouldn't actually be able to tell that it was a flower. So unless that's the look you're going for, if you want to see the print like it's actually a printed dress in this case, you will want to use something very, very small. So I have three little dresses already cut out. So you tell me which one you think we should use. I'm saying not the blue because we've got a blue background. It's like paper dolls. So when I cut this out, I should say while you're choosing, when you cut these, normally I would say when you're cutting to leave a tiny little white border, but here you don't really want to leave a white border. Um, you wanna cut right on that line or just right on the outside of that line so that it just works in seamlessly when it's over top of your image. Or we do have this stripe. That might be too many stripes with that background. Okay, I, looking at the comments, I'm thinking we're all liking that yellow. Even though we've got a yellow net, I think that that one's still the best choice. Okay, we'll move those dresses over there for another day. And then just glue this on top. And these little sleeves are so tiny. It was actually kind of cute cutting these out. Okay, there we go, little Missy. Okay, so now let's put on our butterflies. And what I've done here is I have stamped those, colored them, and then just scissor cut them out. And uh, what I did that because they overlap the net. Plus, it also just gives the card that little bit more dimension and interest because this piece is otherwise fairly flat. And I am putting these up on dimensionals. So that's why I was saying this, the little color that's underneath here, uh, I wasn't really too worried about um, them being colored very well because they were mostly going to be covered anyway. Then we just want to add some, a little bit of sparkles. We've got to have sparkle with our butterflies. And these are some self-adhesive kind of clear sequins that are actually from the artistically inked ephemera pack. So you get these gold foil sheets and then some uh, sequins. So you may actually already have those. Then for our words, what I've done is I have heat embossed them on black in white, and then just take your scissors and cut those apart. I just felt that if I cut those out and had them as a solid image like this, that it was too heavy and too black for a, you know, probably a child's card. So I cut those out as separate pieces and that does kind of lighten them up. It also makes it so that you can fill a bit more space on your card if you want to. I wish I could put them there and cover up my little black mark, but that's okay. Now I've, I did put these up on dimensionals and there we go. There is our card front. So what I would do is probably take some little scraps of this print, the prints that I've used on the front, and use those to bring the pattern through to the inside of the card as well. Now here are just some other samples, same card, but just some different colorways using the Sunshine and Rainbows paper pack still. So you've got the blue, I've got two blue backgrounds, that's all right. And just, you know, you can see some of the different colors that I've used for the little dresses and things. All of those are super cute. And here is another sample that I made with the 
catching butterfly stamp set and also the same paper piecing technique. So this time I used the Sweet Talk designer series paper because I wanted to use the hearts. So the little girl with the net can be paired with lots of different things, not just the butterflies. And so I've just used some die cut hearts and I, um, there is a striped paper in that pack. And so I actually stamped her on the diagonal so that her dress uh, now has this fun diagonal stripe. It's probably not in reality something that someone would wear or wouldn't get made like that, but it's just kind of fun and catches your attention. And then just made this fun little shaker card with the hearts. To make shaker cards like this, it's really helpful if you have a die set that has nesting images like this so that I could use, you know, say the largest rectangle and then maybe two or three sizes in and cut them at the same time and then you can get this sort of outline shape. So if you don't have this or something like this in your collection, that might be something to consider. Then another sample is actually making a little party bag. These are our ombre paper bags. You can buy them already pre-done. Really cute for uh, a little gift or for a party favor. And just decorated it up with some strips of that Sunshine and Rainbows paper and some Knight of Navy. And this time, instead of butterflies or hearts, I actually used our loose flowers and uh, added those. So that's just something also really cute and fun. And I've used our little dotty heart embossing folder on the navy, something that really ties in quite well with both these papers and this stamp set. And you can see that I've used the little sun print this time on her dress. And for this sample, this one has been inspired by uh, one of the designers at, that works at Stampin' Up, a lady named Melody Hyde, very talented. And uh, this time what I've done is I've cut out the girl entirely which uh, just yesterday I received a box and a brand new pair of scissors. So you will, will need very sharp scissors with a pointed edge to cut these very small details. And then what we've done is we've cut out the girl and then put a butterfly from the Butterfly Brilliance die set behind her to create a little fairy or an angel. The other significant thing is that by cutting her out, not only can you put wings behind, but also you'll notice that the net is missing. So that just opens up some possibilities of what you can do with this little girl. And I've cut out her wings with the new supple shimmer paper, and this is the pool party, but it's very, very pale. So it does have that kind of ethereal look. And then my last sample is just a cute little notebook that anyone who loves rainbows and butterflies would enjoy. Now, I have three kids, all of them girls, so I had many, many years of sparkles and butterflies and rainbows and princesses. Um, they would have loved something like this. And what inspired me to do a notebook was actually this, this stamp that's right in the set. It says, Collecting Sweet Thoughts of You. But I thought... Um, just using the collecting sweet thoughts would be quite appropriate because then you could give them the book and then it could be, you know, their musings or their drawings or their words. So what you would do is using the side of your marker, the fat end, the brush end, I should say, you would just color in the words that you do want and not color in the words that you don't want. And then when you stamp down, you're just getting that portion of the stamp. This particular project would be so cute for a birthday party or as a party favor or an activity. And they could even take the butterflies and stamp them inside on the various pages or add little cutouts of the various prints of paper. So there you go. I hope that gives you lots of ideas for paper piecing and also for using your Catching Butterflies stamp set. Please share this video with your friends if you've enjoyed it and leave me a comment below. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel and I'll see you next time. This is Jackie. Bye-bye.